and let's get into it today. We're talking about structure. So as we know, uh, structure creates uh, the path of least resistance. And as a creative energy, we follow the path of least resistance. And, and this is such a fundamental understanding. If, if you, you know, we all know that if you're down at the beach and you, you, you see a little stream making its way down to the water, we know that that water does it if it's following the path of least resistance. If you if you take a, a rock or go get some uh, some sand and put it in the way of the water, water noticing that there's resistance will go around it. You can dig uh, you know a deeper uh, trench, a deeper channel, and the water will um, follow that channel. Right, really really simple. We know that the water is only flowing that way because of this unseen force that we've all decided to call gravity. And so we understand that it moves uh, down a current from, from where it starts and it flows down. And we know that we can change the flow. And so, so we, we really love that metaphor here. You know, it's such a good metaphor to understand that, that we are a creative energy and we are flowing um, through time. And where we flow doesn't depend on how good we are, how hard we work, or, you know, what, what sort of mantra we do, we do every day or how we meditate or what we eat. Uh, the way that we flow in life is 100% down to structure. You know, you would never get annoyed at the water for flowing in a, in a way that you wouldn't want. Well, you might get annoyed at it, but it won't do any good. Instead, what you'll do is you'll, uh, you'll create, you know, a new, a new channel, a new, a new structure, wouldn't you? And so that is the fundamental understanding is that we get to create our structure uh, consciously and our structure will dictate the flow that's available. Okay, so if we want to have more money or we want to have health or we want to have better relationships or we want to, you know, create a new house or, or a new business or some more clients or whatever it is we want to create, if that is at the end, if that's where we want to flow to, we must just ensure that we have a structure that flows towards it. Now, that seems, that seems pretty simple. And we ask ourselves, okay, well, well if, that's, if that's simple enough, why don't I just create a structure in my life and, and then flow towards it? The problem comes because we have uh, different parts of our consciousness that actually want different things. Okay. Uh, you know, they actually want different things. We have a self conscious, and our self conscious, it, uh, it wants a, a better life. So it has a desired reality down here of, uh, of something that's better, different. For example, lots of money. For example, uh, health, or I'll put a little love here, or health. Okay, so our self-conscious, our self-conscious wants it to be different. Does that make sense? It wants it to be different. And uh, that, that, that seems totally normal, uh, yet we want it to be different. However, there's a different part of us, our unconscious, and our unconscious doesn't want it to be different. In, in fact, our, our unconscious wants everything to stay the same. The unconscious has got a very different goal, okay? If, if the self-conscious uh, wants a good life and wants to, to you know, to max out uh, its, its 90 or 80 to 100 years and, and do, the unconscious just wants to live. It just wants to survive. That's all the unconscious wants to do. The unconscious just wants to survive, nothing else. And so it is one question, am I alive? Yes, good. Am I alive? Yes, good. Keep doing whatever I'm doing. Anything new is risky. It's untested. Does that make sense? So it's, un it's untested. So what happens is we have this, this other part of us, and this other part of us doesn't want to change at all. It doesn't want to change. And, uh, and that feeling of not changing <laughs> is uh, completely uh, opposite to, to changing. Okay. So the unconscious, if we have a current reality here, the unconscious uh, has something, an unconscious, what we call an unconscious wound. And the unconscious not wanting to change is always in opposition to our desires. And so if you think back to the water, we have two different structures here. We have a current reality that's focused on the unconscious wound and staying the same. And then we have a, 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 a self-conscious focus, the self-conscious structure that is focused on changing. And what happens is we just bounce between the two. Sometimes we're going for, uh, you know, more money or we're going for uh, a different body shape. And as soon as we move a little bit this way, 
All that does is increase the, the tension of the wound and we pull ourselves back to stay the same. See, the unconscious uh, has learned to survive certain conditions, okay? And these conditions are, are survivable, not necessarily fun, not necessarily abundant, but they are survivable. So how does, how does all this happen? But does that make sense? So, so structure determines where we go. Uh, most people, this is in conflict with this. So they don't actually uh, go towards it at all. And they, they, just, they just bounce around. Okay, and and they don't get to where they want to get to, and uh, all they do is make one step this way to go towards something. As soon as they go this way, their unconscious wound pops up and says, "You can't have that. You're not good enough. You're not this." Blah blah blah, and pulls them back down to down to the experience they've always had in their life of not being good enough or not having enough money. But they they know that, and then they they go, "Well, I want to change it," so they go to change it. As soon as they go to change it, the unconscious pops up with a fear, a, a feeling, a, a life condition, a health crisis, a family, this, a job getting lost, something pops up and they have to go back and deal with it. And, and that's, that's, that's literally uh, all of us. And so what we've established uh, really quickly on this call is that there are two structures we can live in. Okay. One structure is the creative structure where we're focused on what it is that we would like to see exist and the experience of that. And then the other structure is based on an unconscious wound that we, we don't actually want to fix or heal or give up. And that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Why would I not want to give up this feeling of inadequacy or this feeling of, of doubt or this self-criticism or, or why would I not want to give up being broke like why would i not want to give that up it doesn't sound like things that I, well, why would i not want to change it why would i want to say the same and the answer is is that your unconscious doesn't want to change it because it's been survived and if it's been survived it's it's met the requirements of the unconscious can i survive it and so basically simply put whatever you survive your unconscious wants more of it's whatever it is, whatever it is. So, so, you know, down here, this is a survivable experience. This has been survived. And so one part of us wants to go for this survivable experience and one part of us wants to go for, uh, for this, other, this other part. So how does this all happen? And, and what is it that we need to do to restructure our life? Because simply put, if we can let go of this, and just step into this experience, we're going to flow towards absolutely everything we want. There's no need to have this. Yet, <laughs> it seems that most of us uh, most of us do. So let's have a quick look. I've got uh, a, a little image here. Many of you have seen this before. Uh, this is, is going straight from um, my, my book. So can you guys see that image? Yeah, there you go. So we all start out as pure creative energy, okay? We all start out as pure creative energy and we, we enter a vehicle of expression, meaning we enter our human experience, okay? Then in our human experience, we want to know how it is to be a human, to be in this family and, and to, to be a part of the world. We want to thrive and survive. That's what we're, we're trying. How do I thrive? How do I survive in this new experience called a human being? What happens is as we move through life, we end up having unmet needs. There is a wounding experience that we all go through. This wounding experience is predictable. From the wounding experience, we create a compensating strategy, which then causes us to be stuck in this compensating strategy. So let me just discuss this wounding experience, okay? There are a few rights that the unconscious uh, is, is seeking to find. The first is the right to exist. The first is the right to exist. The first thing that we're looking to get confirmation of is that we exist and we're allowed to exist and we're allowed to be here. That's the very first one. The second one is to have needs and to have those needs met. Does that make sense? 
to have needs and have those needs met. If we don't, for whatever reason, get our needs met or even be allowed to have needs, we'll go through, through life compensating for that. The next is to be separate and unique, but also belong to the family. The next is to take action and face consequences. And the last is to love and be loved. Did anyone get all of those down? I'll read them out again. I think someone's gonna, someone will type it in the link. To exist, to, to have needs and have those needs met, to be separate, unique, and still belong, to take actions and face consequences, to love and be loved. See if someone someone's able to get the full the full lot in the chat box. Christy's doing a good job. Abby's done a good job. There you go. Abby nailed it. Well done. Uh, well done. Uh, on education team. So 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 here's what's happening. So we somehow all of us find a way to have one of these, two of these, or all of these needs to be not satisfactory in the way that they are met. They might be met, let's, let's use a, 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 a crude metaphor, they might be met 85%. They might be met 50%. One, you might fully have it met. Others might be, right? like, they're not all fully met. And so this, when they don't get met, there's this wounding experience, which is, you know, do, do I even really have a right to exist? Am I even wanted here? That wound then creates a strategy of like trying to prove that, you know, you, I deserve to be here or uh, potentially just saying, well, I don't really deserve to be here. Uh, I don't really have the right to be here. So I just won't have any goals, right? And that becomes this compensating strategy this current reality, this person continually finds their way to not really, not really existing in the world, kind of just floating. Uh, maybe somebody who uh, was never allowed needs, you know, maybe they were, you know, the, the, the middle child between, you know, the, the, the one older than them is 10 months older than them and the one younger than them is a year younger than them, now right in the middle. And so, you know, mom was always busy with someone else, or maybe they were the oldest. And it's like, well, you, you know, you, look, just look after yourself, you know, or maybe, uh, maybe, uh, you know, mom or dad was just having a really hard time in, in life just, just along the way. And this child's trying to get there, trying to be allowed to have needs and have those needs met, but for whatever reason, didn't feel like they got met and feel like, you know, they had everything they needed. And, uh, and so then they, they come up with, well, maybe I don't, maybe I'm not allowed to have needs. So I'll just help everybody else there. Oh, I don't have needs. I'll, I'm here to help everyone else, not me. I don't want to actually uh, take anything from it. Uh, and, and you always find um, the, the person that has a really hard time um, having their needs met, met uh, they think the opposite of give is receive. The opposite of give is take. But even, even when I say you get to take from life, they even feel scared to say their words. They have to like dress it up and call it receive. Receive. So you no, know, you take, you give, you take. It's, it's a, you take, you get, if you get given something, you take it. You don't, yeah. So, so the, the, the needs and needs to be met. The next one is um, separate, um, the, is the right to be separate. Sometimes you find a person had this um, right not actually um, met and they're never really allowed to be themselves. They're, 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 they're not allowed to be unique and to be them. They're, they're so busy trying to be what everyone else thinks they should be. They don't actually have that. Uh, the next uh, is to take actions and to face the consequences. Uh, a lot, a lot of people that are in this work really uh, 
are have a hard time with this one. They have a hard time with being able to take actions and face the consequences. They, they actually scared of this thing that they've made up called failure. But for some reason, failure is just not allowed, as in it's such a taboo thing, is they're not allowed to face consequence of their own actions. They're not allowed to try. They're not allowed to go for something. They have this whole model um, um, built up around uh, facing consequences and taking actions and making their own decisions. And they need an authority or someone else. Please tell me what I should do. Can you show me how I should do it rather than figuring it out and, and, and getting success and having fun. They really have a, a big challenge with this. Uh, and so you can see all of these wounds create this current reality, and then the current reality uh, has these, uh, these actions here. And these actions might be to not take the action or to, you know, to, to try to exist, but we're, we're doing it all based around this wound. And most, most humans are literally just stuck in the same experience that they coded up at a really, really, really early age. And all they're doing is pretending that they're trying to get away from this experience, but they wouldn't actually know who they were if they didn't have that experience. It is terrifying to them to, to actually receive, uh, to actually receive love. It's terrifying uh, to them to actually exist because if they were to exist, well, then this unconscious wound uh, is, is no longer valid. And anyway, the last one is to love and, uh, and to be loved. And again, I see a lot of uh, wounding around this, that, that they're not actually allowed to be loved, they're not allowed to love, that it's just, it's not allowed. And so this is very important because, by the way, is this good stuff? You guys enjoying uh, hearing this uh, again or maybe for the first time? I think, uh, yeah, nice, nice. I think it's really important because it takes a huge amount of courage to let go of this. It takes a huge amount of courage to actually step into becoming a creator because we've got such a fear of our unconscious wound being true. You know, we've got we've got so much fear of it being true. You know, somebody who uh, who feels like they don't have a right to exist, they are so worried that they might not actually have a right to exist that that they 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 hold on to that fear. It's um, that fear is important to them, and it's important to their orientation. And that's a very important thing to, to understand. And, and here's what I want you to get, is the prime directive is to, for the unconscious, is to survive. In order to do that, it must maintain identity coherence. It must maintain identity coherence. It must know who it is or, or how the world is moment to moment. Just give me a second. I've got a, a weird, I just need to move my blind. Can you see that weird light? The sun's beautifully come up, but it's um, bugging me. That should be better. Ah, I feel like I can see again. So we're trying to maintain identity coherence. We want to know who we are. And if we were to completely let go of our unconscious wound, we wouldn't really know who we are. A mentor of mine, William Whitecloud, says, you know, you can't shift your, um, your, your beliefs, your core beliefs. And... It's in my opinion, it's a half truth. You can shift a lot, but there's this core, um, this core wounding experience that actually creates who you are, and it creates your superconscious superpower. So, if our unconscious needs to maintain this identity coherence, 
And we, we understand that. What we must realize is that that experience is always going to be there. We must learn to let it go and shift. We must be able to shift into the different structure. So all of the awful or limiting things that we decide about ourselves is in service of us trying to make sense of the world. All of the awful and limiting things we decided about ourselves is in service of this attempt to make sense of the world. And if there is such a thing as a father like that who says, you know, children should uh, be seen and not heard, we make a decision that to belong in this family, we must be seen and not heard. And that decision becomes a wounding experience because we, we want to exist and we want to be and we, we want to have needs, we want to have them met. But in service of, well, that's how the world is, I don't get to have that need. So that need is denied. And so it's denied. And then we put that in the wounding experience. And if we were to be allowed to have anything different, all of a sudden, we wouldn't know how the world is anymore. Does that make sense, everyone? We wouldn't know how it is because that's how we did. The world is that way. And so to the unconscious, if you grow up in a, in a family where every morning they wake up with a hammer and they knock you on the head with a hammer and that's what you do every morning, you wake up, that's going to hurt, you know, but it's not, it's not going to kill you. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. But you'll create the belief that the world is you wake up and you get hit on the head with a hammer. If you're then to grow up and you, you know, you go around for sleepovers at other parents' houses and you wake up in the morning and you, and, and you realize they don't hit you on the head with a hammer, you start to think, oh, so others don't do that. I don't have to do that. You'll go out into the world and it'll feel like something's missing. And you find yourself banging your head against the wall, trying to recreate how the world is. Because as painful as the hammer is on your head, it is not as painful as not knowing how the world is and how to fit in to your family. That is more painful. Not fitting into your family and not knowing how the world is is more painful. So you you take you take knowing. And you'll try all sorts of things, start businesses, go to courses, change relationships, new diets. And you'll just keep finding that fucking hammer. See, we can survive anything, but we cannot survive not belonging to our tribe, to our family, or, or knowing how the world is. And so all change work starts with now. It starts with putting down the hammer and sitting in the uncomfortable feeling and using recode until your unconscious learns that that's not what's needed. See, the, the quicker that you can bring this unconscious wound into your car, bring it up and experience what it is that you want to experience over here, the quicker that you can bring this into here and survive being happy, you can survive being happy long enough 
that's when you access the magnetic moment. And as soon as this is equal feeling to this, if this is equal, then you just go and have whatever it is you choose. And this, so the journey is actually about being it now. Once you can be it now, you can walk the superconscious path. Once you can be it now. Because the, the, the rest of it is, is just, you know, putting it together. You know, like you want to have lots of money. There's things you do. The harder thing is, is allowing it to be. So we need to restructure your life. And the way to restructure your life is that you actually be it now. We actually be it now. And it is, as soon as we, we be it now, we're, we, we're just opening the door to a whole new way of being where you have graduated out of your childish wound. But that's just the start. Once you can be it now, that's great. It's very easy when you can be it now for, for life to become meaningless and purposelessness, purposefulness, to have no purpose. Purposelessness, less of purpose. You guys get it. Purposelessness. Fuck it, I don't know. Two swearing in one session, far too much. And so once you can be it now, you then got the next challenge, which is if I already feel good now and I can sit in meditation and I can love my life and I can live the core four, well, then this whole story uh, that I have been told about how there are things that I can be, do, change, have, uh, experience, this whole story that something outside of me will impact me drips away, melts away. And so we must become aware of what we what happens next is is once once you arrive there there's a real tendency for people to go oh well now what's the point and it's such an interesting thing we say well, what's the point it's it's like it's in the language what's the point that what's the point of this what's the point of if, if i can be completely happy in the moment uh what's the point and so it seems to me that the point is to become a creator and to make impact on others. Whether that impacts through arts or business or poetry or family or food or whatever it is, there's a, there's a point to make an impact, to, to, do, to do something that uh, feels really, really, really good for just the for no other reason than it feels good to do it. And so we get into that, that, and then we must ask ourselves, what is it that I want to create? And that's when you become magic, because at that point, you don't really need the money. You're already 
bigger than what it, money can't do anything for you that you can't do for you, but it's fun. You don't really need to change a lot of people's lives, but it feels really good. You don't really need to be a, a great uh, husband or, or wife or parent, but you enjoy the feelings of, of those things. They feel good. And so what happens is, is as you, as you shed the unconscious uh, wound and you become uh, bigger than the moment and, and you, you, you are in the moment greater than it, then you just ask yourself, what is going to feel good? Because when you arrive there, and all of you are going to get there, hopefully faster than you could in any and without the program, we're going to get you there. Then you've got this really challenging question, which is, what would I like? Uh, what would I like? What would I like to engage with? What would I like to create? And, and that becomes kind of stage two. What would you like? And that's, that just means life becomes this big game where, you know, you get to make up the rules and nothing can be taken from you because there's nothing outside of you that is causing you to have anything. Does that make sense? So your, your challenge here with magnetic mind is to arrive in the now, completely satisfied and happy and without needing to change yourself, satisfied, feeling good, without the need to become more perfect, without the need to go and help others to, to gain love, without the need to achieve a lot so that you suddenly uh, uh, get get uh, impress others without the need to you know discover yourself more without the need to uh, uh, understand the world to create safety without without the need to find an authority to follow without the need to uh, run to your next exciting idea without the need to puff yourself up and be more powerful and in control or without without the need to, to try to create peace and harmony outside of yourself, just, just there. And, and, and you just, you just, you just there. And then you ask yourself, okay, so, so I'm completely in the moment, present in the current. And that is how you get into that structure. Then you simply ask yourself, what would be a fun thing to engage with? And you might change what would be a fun thing to engage with, with what would I enjoy to create? You might change it to what would be um, meaningful for me? What would be uh, worthwhile? What would, what would matter? What would, uh, what would be, uh, you know, what would, what would be something that I could just really get behind? And it, and it will change. And that becomes your orientation. Well, that's, that's how I want to orient. So, Yes. Yeah, so anyway, that's what was on my mind today that I wanted to share with you. That's <laughs> good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So let's um, you know, let's do a let's do a choice. Let's do a choice together. Your choices are uh, uh, points of information in the future. That's all they are, the points of uh, information. You're, you're a point of information right now. So, so your choices. Your choices are actually uh, useful because they will, as soon as you, you make a choice, you're unconscious doing, you know, everything that it's uh, designed to do will we'll basically show you its wound. Does that make sense? Or say, here, here's where I feel wounded. Here's where I feel limited. As soon as you make the choice, it, it literally, what will show up is, here's what I don't have. I need more money. Uh, I need resources. I need a partner. I need 
I need to stop being this. I need to change that. I wish I was skinnier. I wish all of the rubbish will show up. And so we use a choice to, to help trigger the unconscious to share uh, what, what's, what's lurking beneath the surface and uh, the surface of your self-conscious awareness because your self-conscious just thinks, oh yeah, we should just go make a bunch of money. Your unconscious thinks, well, I don't deserve it. I haven't done enough. People that have money are, you know, assholes, whatever, right? And, uh, and so it shows it. So as we make the choice, so step one is we make a choice. Step two is we feel it. The unconscious does, uh, just works in metaphors and symbols and feelings. So we feel it. As soon as we feel it, we notice who we are now compared to that. And then we ask questions and notice what shows up. And the point of it is to use the creative structure to bring all of this wounding here into our reality and then to notice it, to be bigger than it, and to, to let it go. However, if we just let it go, there is a void. And the void needs to be filled. So as you let it go, you can't just stop. You must fill it with new beliefs and new information and the universe abhors a void. There cannot just be a void. So we can't just do recode and all this is gone because the only thing it knows is there was something there, it's gone. Let's find something else to put there. And so we'll go back and recreate it unless you start putting in the new things for it. So how do I, where's my hand need to go? There, instead of uh, new things to survive. So you need to go for it. You need to start experiencing and surviving. Does that make sense? And so most people make the mistake of turning up here, just trying to get rid of this stuff. And all they do is they get rid of it and their brain doesn't know any, has got no other instructions. It can't exist with a void. So it just recreates those. So then you can get rid of them again. And a lot of people just bounce around. See here, they go from current reality. This is what's wrong with me. They get rid of it. Uh, well, I better put, we need something else there. We need to put something there. We need to put something there. I had a, a good friend of mine, someone who's been in this work a long time, uh, have a completely new experience. Got the job and money that they wanted. And it was all there. But then on, on the call, still telling me, oh, but I, I, don't, I have money beliefs. So, but what are you talking about? You have it. And so there, there is a tendency for us to live in this problem reality where the only thing that we're trying to do is to, to fix ourselves. 